Hello, and welcome to Lost in Time, a series where we delve into the lost railway history of the ACT and go exploring to find what has survived the test of time. In today's episode, we're taking a look at what was for many years the busiest part of the Canberra branch, the many, many industrial sidings in Fishwick. The story begins with the opening of the Canberra branch in 1914. At that time, the area now known as Fishwick was largely undeveloped and pastoral. This changed with the construction of the Malonglo internment camp in 1918. China had recently entered the First World War on the side of the Allies, and began a mass deportation of German and Austrian nationals living in Chinese territory. A number of internment camps were built all across Australia, and Malonglo was a late addition, opening in April 1918. These internees never arrived, and instead Malonglo took on internees from camps at Berrima and Bork, housing a total of 150 families. In 1919, these internees were deported to Europe, and the internment camp was closed. The camp buildings were gradually sold off, until resumption of Canberra's construction in 1921 saw a number of workers needing somewhere to live. The camp was revitalised and used as accommodation for construction workers and their families, and then as low-cost housing until around 1955, with the population steadily decreasing in that time and the houses demolished as demand declined. The railway provided a short goods platform and siding at Malonglo, with plans for expansion. This would have included a passenger platform and stockyard for loading livestock. These never eventuated, and the siding was closed along with the camp it served. For a brief period, however, the siding did have one unusual claim to fame. After the First World War, a large railway gun, known as the Amiens gun, was repatriated from France to Australia, with the intent to display it at the proposed Australian War Memorial in Canberra. It was transferred by rail, but since the memorial hadn't been built yet, it had to be kept somewhere nearby. So it was placed on the Malonglo siding, and remained there until 1927 when it was put on semi-permanent display outside the railway station. During World War II, the bogies and mount were requisitioned by the army to help test new naval cannons, and after the war it was decided to only display the surviving gun barrel, and the remainder was cut up for scrap. The barrel can still be seen today outside the Australian War Memorial. The branch line from Queenbian to Canberra was plagued by constant issues of storm damage. The line runs quite close to the banks of the Malonglo River, and even during construction the line was washed out by heavy rains. Severe damage occurred in 1914, 1916 and 1925. In 1928, with the line now fully open to passengers, it was agreed that something must be done. A new alignment, higher and further away from the river, was built. The original alignment can still be seen alongside the current railway. In 1967, significant changes were made on the line through Fishwick. With it now becoming the hub for industry in the capital city, local businesses wanted better access to the railway. The original winding route was straightened. The old main line was shifted slightly south to allow for the installation of two further lines, and down at Jerobombra Creek it was significantly realigned so that a completely new set of bridges, higher and more substantial than the originals, could be built. These two new lines became the main through line and the north shunt, with the original alignment becoming the south shunt. Ipswich Street was also given a new overbridge, as the original level crossing was notorious for accidents. During this reconstruction, any surviving trace of the Malonglo siding was lost, and the site today is unrecognisable. A short distance east, one can still find the original alignment. Curiously, close by is the original road to Queenbian, now superseded by Canberra Avenue. The old alignments of both the road and railway can be seen in these photographs. A large network of sidings sprouted from the north and south shunts, serving a variety of industries in Fishwick. While most traffic had ceased by the mid-1990s, the sidings are still clearly visible from the air, and have shaped the roads around them. 
The South Shunt, which crossed Jerobombra Creek on a significantly lower bridge, retained its propensity for flood damage. It caused a few derailments in the ensuing years. In 1969, the Trackfast Depot and Associated Goods Yard were built at Kingston. The railway sold off blocks of neighbouring land to prospective businesses to construct their own sidings and goods depots. Their aspirations didn't quite work out, however, as only one was ever built. Known as the Brambles Siding, this now private land neighbours the railway museum. Rail freight into Canberra dwindled steadily as trucks became a more viable option. The last rail freight service to Canberra was the Shell Oil Train, which ceased in 2009. For some years thereafter, the tankers were left in situ at the depot, until rebuilding work required them to be removed, and they can now be seen dotted around the railway yard. In the mid-2010s, there was an attempt to reignite freight trains out of Canberra by transporting scrap metal, but sadly this has not met with any success. Today, Fishwick thrives as a vital hub of Canberran industry, but the railway sidings sadly lie cold and overgrown. A portion of the North Shunt is still used by Canberra Railway Museum, but the remainder is a quiet, unassuming reminder of the once integral commodity of rail freight. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please consider leaving a like, and drop a comment down below if you have any questions or you'd like us to explore a particular part of Canberra's railway history. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified when we upload next. Like us on Facebook and visit our website, links are in the description.